Vickers had filed for um for damages related to violations of the uh like injunction that he had against them either that or I think it was faith that might have had the injunction so he files for damages against Ralph and Vickers wins that's the sound of the crack the bat hits the ball and the the ball flies off it's a home run thousands of people are cheering for Matthew Vickers for that amazing home run the bases were loaded everyone's walking it in and um, the bat is in two pieces on the ground beneath him and it says the court considered the nature and severity of the repeat derogatory statements made by respondent the court considers respondent statements in mitigation and took note that the respondent showed no remorse for his actions all things considered respondent is sentenced to pay a fine of five hundred dollars for each of the three incidents described herein or a total fine of fifteen hundred dollars the court will stay one thousand dollars of fine so long as respondent strictly complies with all the stipulation in order hereafter five hundred dollar fine a cool five hundred dollar fine against ethan oliver ralph paid to the court and if he doesn't act on his best behavior another thousand dollars that's about three streams of super chats of Ethan Ralph's money to pay that fine if he does it again. Um, however, you know, even in flawless victory, we have to acknowledge the shortcomings, the uh, where things fell, fell a little flat. Mentions here right below that paragraph, actually, attorney's fees. Petitioner, Vickers, seeks attorney's fees in the amount of six thousand dollars that request is denied without prejudice petitioner must notice and serve a separate motion for reasonable attorney's fees this court will then consider the same effort has had an opportunity to hear from all parties so five hundred dollar fine straight from the pay pigs themselves for mr vickers all at the cool cost of a little six thousand dollars now you might be thinking if you're not mathematically inclined to the grand machinations of mr vickers that this is an unequal treaty and that maybe vickers spent 12 times the amount of money that ethan ralph is forced to pay but keep in mind foolish stalker childs who don't understand the genius of mr vickers that he can file again See, if he decides to pay another $6,000 to refile his arguments as a separate uh, 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 motion within the court, then he could possibly reclaim that original $6,000 uh, if the court were to grant him exactly what he asked for, not a penny less. So, as he says here, there, there is no pleasure... Wait, no, sorry. You no, know actually, this is the right one. I think this is the right one. Again, Mr. Vickers' Twitter account is locked. I can't verify that this is real. But he says, There is no pleasure comparable to being mercilessly wallet raped by the swine master. Mr. Vickers is his finest pay piggy. $70,000 he'll never get back and doesn't deserve to have. Uh, being burned in the altar of the swine master. Seeing Xander reminds him to continue to pay up and pay piggy is all he is. Uh, allegedly. I, I can only... Look, I, I get these nice, these nice uh, screen caps from Mr. Vickers' timeline um, from, I think, Jacko Verde on the forum. So I'm forced to, I, it, look, if these are not true, and I'm pretty sure they are, they sound, they sound like something Mr. Vickers would write. Uh, if they're not true, you have to take it up with Jacko on the forum. Assuming that you're, any of you are smart enough to figure out Tor and use the forum. <laughs> uh, but then also from the Ralph sector, after this judgment came, and because the 
Order noted that he showed no remorse for his actions. Ralph decided to go and write a blog post about how he never apologizes. I will. I read the last one, and based on the feedback of reading Ralph's last blog post, uh, many of you did not enjoy it. So even though I could do it in my funny Ralph impression, I will not read the entirety of this blog post in the Ralph voice. I will instead read um, one paragraph uh, from it. When you get sober, as I have the past 40 days or so, you naturally want to try to put as many old feuds to bed as you can. You think you can get a lot over, or you can get over a lot of the old bullshit through changes in your behavior and public posture. The only problem is that you need the other side to reciprocate. Most of the times they won't, however. They see your apology as weakness. Peace is not something they want. Detente isn't the goal, your defeat is. Um, so, I have a question. Chat. Um, I, I like to engage with my chat. If any of you are recovering alcoholics or similar, and you have uh, been keeping track of your sobriety, I want to know if it's reasonable to describe being sober for 40 days or so or if you would know immediately how many days exactly you've been sober, if you were actually sober. Uh, does anyone know? I'm I'm curious if anyone has the uh, the life experience to tell me uh, if you would know the exact day, or if you would uh, be able to we just guesstimate it. Axios says, to the day. Matt at Archive says, you would know. For the Ghost says, I just set a date. Not at all. To the day for sure. Franch John says, you have it memorized. Mike West says, you know exactly how many days you'd be sober. Um, I counted every day at the start. You would know every hour, says Evil Sponge. <laughs> Someone said in all caps, every single day. So a lot of people uh, seem, to, seem to believe that if you were actually being completely sober, you wouldn't seem to know, you seem to be counting down the hours since you've stopped drinking. Um, my, my thought with Ralph sobriety is I think that he's cut back on a lot of stuff because he is sober and boring sounding on stream. Um, I really don't think he, like his, his definition of sober is like still smoking weed, still drinking, but like, he's just taking a lot less Xanax and he's not drinking and taking Xanax at the same time. Um, that seems to be how he does it. And by the way, I, I uh, read up a lot about like Xanax withdrawal and shit. And it, when I heard about, um, quitting Xanax, I saw warnings from a lot of these um, sober websites about how the most surprise, like when people die from complications related to, to Xanax, like overdosing, it came from after a period of sobriety, like people would say, oh, I knew X, Y, Z, and she was doing great. She had completely gotten off Xanax and gotten her life around. And then like a month later, she fucking dies from overdose. So it seems to be that um, when people try to quit is when they're at most danger of like binging hard and, and dying on Xanax. So he can't go cold turkey. We all know that. He's not sober. Um, that's why he says 40 days or so. He's he's probably just not drinking and taking Xanax. He's reducing his intake. Um, which is, I mean, good for him. But I don't know. The other interesting thing in this is that he mentions Ricada. Says here, there are some exceptions here and there. I've been known online for almost a decade. As I mentioned in the opening, I have made peace with many different people. Just recently, I made peace with Alex Stein and Nick Ricada after major feuds. 
but there weren't really any apologies exchanged, certainly not major public ones. I simply messaged both gentlemen, and it was decided it's best to move on. At one point in time, we were good friends and colleagues. There is no great discussion of what is needed to be done, no demands of public prostration, nothing except at all except a desire to move on and get past the conflict. Uh, and then he says down here, in the case of Stein and Ricada, I never truly hated either. Yes, it was very acrimonious. I did many vitriolic streams on both men. They hit me pretty hard in return. In both examples, though, the original feud started from professional disagreements. However petty those original problems were, they weren't based in personal disdain. Yes, they were public and high profile, but there's always a bit of odd reverence in there. These people were once your friends, for fuck's sake. Yes, there is a breed of former friend that fits into the other category I mentioned above. Still, you have a much better chance of making peace with this sort of enemy than you do the other. Most of the time, they don't really want to be fighting you either. In case you don't remember, or you were not around for this event, once upon a time, Ethan Ralph, sitting in his chair, leaned forward on camera, shit his pants violently, loudly, and then whispered in disgust of his own actions into the microphone. Ah, oh, shit. And this was known as Sharkgate. And many people made fun of the fact that Ralph shit his pants on stream. Um, someone sent this clip to Nicholas Ricada, who uh, at that time had not had Ralph on his stream for a couple weeks because Ralph was in a massive, obvious, blatant public downward spiral and was alienating absolutely everyone he had ever known. Uh, Ralph Ricada played this clip and then made a stinky poo-poo face at the camera like, ew, that's disgusting. And then he moved on. This is the professional disagreement that Ralph is referring to. However, uh, more hilariously is that his reaction to this uh, is what he and this is what he considers a professional disagreement when ralph heard that ricada had made the shanky poo poo face uh listening to ralph shit his pants he immediately said that ricada's wife was a cuckold being fucked by drexel and then also i believe pulled up pictures of his children and called them retarded and said something like, your wife is getting fucked every night by your big black bull while you take care of your retarded fucking kids. And <laughs> and uh, that was what he considers a professional disagreement. Um, and I also think he's making this out to be a lot. I don't, I don't really don't think that there's any chance that Ricada and Ralph are about to start being friends. He just sort of messaged him. I think he, what probably happens, he just sort of messaged him like, um, so I'm doing the whole turn a new leaf thing, and you're one of the few people that I actually regret alienating you because you didn't do anything besides make stanky poo-poo face when you heard me shit my pants. So um, I think we shouldn't stop beefing. What's Rakeda going to say to that? No, fuck you. Kill yourself. Probably not. He's a lawyer. He's going to be a little bit more diplomatic than that probably. He's going to be like, uh, sure, whatever. Okay. I'm still not going to do anything with you. I could be wrong. Who knows, though? Maybe I'm, I'm nose guarding yet again. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.